Decontamination of equipment is carried out by degrees in all four echelons. After an attack by mustard gas or lewisite, trucks move on until they are out of the contaminated area. They stop only after reaching the nearest place of safety. In the first echelon, the driver or assistant driver, using the one and one half quart spray, starts at the top of the door and works down, cleaning a path for himself as he gets out of the truck. This one and one half quart apparatus is standard equipment on all vehicles in the field of operations. It carries enough liquid to decontaminate those parts of the truck which would come in contact with the driver and his clothes. In the second echelon, the entire body of the truck is sprayed. This work is done by men of the decontamination detail who are dressed in protective clothing. Thick coatings of the chemical can be removed by using swabs dipped in kerosene or gasoline. Canvas covers are taken off and left to air. A warning sign should be posted beside them. The whole body of the truck is then sprayed with non-corrosive decontaminating agent. This three gallon apparatus is the standard equipment for second echelon work. The tank is refilled in the field by mixing the special non-corrosive white powder with acetylene tetrachloride. These have been previously prepared in the correct measures for mixing. This is stirred until the white powder is completely dissolved. Then it is poured into the decontaminating spray tank. When the work is finished, the detector crayon, another standard test, is used to make sure no vesicant remains on the body. If there is mustard or lewisite present, the color of the crayon turns from red to blue. The truck is now safe to drive, but further decontamination work must be carried out before any repair work is done for it is possible there will be traces of mustard or lewisite in the cracks and crevices or in mud on the chassis of the truck. In the third echelon, a 400 gallon apparatus is used to complete the work. By using a water spray and scrapers, all mud is removed from the chassis. Then all parts of the truck are sprayed with non-corrosive decontamination solution or with a slurry of chlorinated lime. If chlorinated lime is used, it should be washed off after one hour to prevent corrosion. The bleach solution consists of one part of chlorinated lime to one part of water by volume, which is then stirred until thoroughly mixed. The bleach is strained through a funnel strainer as it is poured into the tank. Thus, any lumps or solid particles that would clog the nozzle are removed. A wooden paddle can be used to break up any lumps that remain. After the top is replaced and screwed in tight, the air pressure in the tank is built up by means of the pressure pump, which is part of the apparatus. The three gallon decontamination spray is now ready for use. Open vehicles such as half tracks must be decontaminated inside as well as outside. In the first echelon, the men of the crew go over the inside of the car with a hand spray and then use swabs to remove any trace of vesicant. In decontaminating the outside of the vehicle, the crew always work on the upwind side. When one side of the car is thoroughly decontaminated, it is turned around so that they can continue to work on the upwind side.
tanks are decontaminated in much the same way as other vehicles. After the tank has passed out of the contaminated area and reached a place of safety, it is turned facing into the wind and stopped. One of the crew opens the hatch and wipes off the edge of the opening with a rag saturated in decontaminating solution. Then, using the one and one half quart sprayer, he cleans off a place on which to stand. Another man of the crew climbs through the open hatch to aid him. In order to conserve the liquid and secure an even distribution, the spray is moved continuously across the surface. The turret is turned in two complete revolutions to permit the men to swab and spray the front of the turret rings and top hatch. On the first revolution, the lower turret rings and the front of the turret are decontaminated. And on the second, the ring at the base of the cupola, the front of the cupola, and the top hatch. When the turret has been finished, the men work toward the front, swabbing and spraying as they advance. Particular attention should be given to openings and to points where air enters the tank. In the second echelon, before the tank goes into bivouac, the process is continued with a three-gallon apparatus filled with non-corrosive decontaminating solution. Further decontamination is carried out in the third and fourth echelon maintenance sections using water, chlorinated lime, or non-corrosive solution. In cleaning weapons, the heavy spots or thick coatings of liquid agent and all contaminated grease or oil are first removed. This is done by swabbing with kerosene or gasoline. Then the weapon is sprayed with a non-corrosive solution. After the non-corrosive agent has evaporated, the weapon is washed with soap and water. This done, it is then thoroughly dried and finally covered with a thin layer of oil. Other weapons, such as rifles and machine guns, are decontaminated in the same way. After such work, all rags and cloths that have been used are burned or buried at a safe distance from the troops. Wherever decontamination work has been done on vehicles and weapons, the ground must be covered with chlorinated lime to neutralize any agents that have been scraped or washed from the equipment. When the work is finished, the men must decontaminate themselves. After shuffling their shoes in a mixture of chlorinated lime and earth, the men brush both shoes and leggings thoroughly. This is done to remove the lime which is injurious to leather if left too long. Then the shoes are taken off. The men work in pairs, helping each other to remove outer clothing without letting it come in contact with the body. The protective gloves are worn throughout all this process to safeguard the skin of the hands. As the clothes are taken off, they are hung out to air thoroughly. The socks are removed, and finally the underwear and gloves. This is followed by a bath. Hot water is better, but any water will do. When bathing in a stream, the men spread out across it so that they will avoid any poisonous agent that may be carried downstream. Then come fresh clothes, and the men are ready to rejoin their units. Decontamination, quickly and thoroughly carried out, can destroy the effectiveness of any persistent chemical attack. 
it is essential that decontamination principles and methods be thoroughly understood in order to avoid damage to equipment. 